Welcome to the Enter the Bible podcast, where you can get answers or at least reflections on everything you wanted to know about the Bible, but were afraid to ask. I'm Katherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Katie Langston. And today on the podcast, we have a very, very special guest, our very own Jenny Wojciechowski, who is Assistant Professor of Church History at Luther Seminary and author of the wonderful book, Women and the Christian Story, A Global History. And she is also the instructor of a wonderful course on our Faith Lead platform, faithlead.org, called um, Faithfully Gifted Women in Church History. So, yay. Welcome, Jenny. So glad to have you with us. Thanks for having me back. I've got another course on uh, that'll be coming up on just general church history too on Faith Lead. Yay! So exciting. Mm -hmm. That's it's so good. Church history is so important. I think sometimes it's like maybe a little bit neglected uh, in the theological disciplines, and it really shouldn't be because it's very important to sort of know like how did we get here? What what what's happened? So and to quote Ecclesiastes, "There's nothing new under the sun." Yes. My like, favorite quote. Like church <laughs> conflict, like um, heresies. Yeah. yeah. Other things. <laughs> they're they're things always perennial. <laughs> <laughs> My little tagline on my email is that quote from Ecclesiastes. Oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. I love uh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, we have a question today um, that we are, uh, we turn to Jenny to kind of help us um, figure out. And that is a question about sainthood. And since Jenny is both a church history scholar and a Roman Catholic, um, which has maybe more emphasis on the saints, I think to our detriment, uh, honestly, in the, in the evangelical and Protestant uh, traditions. Um, you know, we thought you would be the perfect person to sort of help us think through it. Um, and if you have a question, by the way, wonderful listener or uh, viewer of this podcast, uh, you can ask your own question at enterthebible.org and um, we do our best. We read every question. We do our best to answer as many of them as we can uh, on the podcast. But the question um, that we have today is, um, how did the concept of saints develop uh, in the Bible and then in history as well? Yes. Thank you. You know, we Catholics do love our saints, so I'm happy to, I'm always happy to talk about them. <laughs> I'll talk about our favorite saints later if we have time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, most of us now know like the very complicated process of canonization. We probably, you know, Mother Teresa was canonized recently, Oscar Romero, some of those folks. Sainthood in the early church was basically nothing like what it is today. So mm-hmm. in the early church, really what the, who the saints were, were the martyrs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Remember for the first 300 years of Christian history, Christianity was illegal. And so a lot of people died for the faith. Um, The persecutions weren't um, constant, but they were ever present, right? There was always the risk that you could die for your faith, all right? And so Christians tended to be pretty serious, right? If you could possibly be thrown in an arena with lions and eaten, then you're probably, you know, you're probably not going to be just the like, you know, "Ah, I show up on Christmas and Easter. You know, you're pretty (laughs) dedicated people, right? If that's the the consequence. (laughs) All right. And so (laughs) martyrdom (laughs) becomes this huge, huge deal in the early church. And we have a number of martyrdom accounts from first person accounts. Uh, We have trial accounts. We have really stylized accounts that probably weren't like did actually happen. Um, but, but it was, it was a big, big deal. All right. And so one of the, the first instances we have, um, and then this is another Catholic thing that Protestants are kind of uncomfortable with, but we're going to handle this too. All right. Let's dive in. We're going to, we're going to relics. All right, because oh, wow. these two right. things yeah, come up piece. together. Yeah, they right? do, so like yes. when Polycarp, one of the mm-hmm. kind of first famous martyrdoms, we have a martyrdom account of it, is killed, you see people taking bits of Polycarp and keeping him as relics too. Like right? like pieces of his bone, right? That, yeah, yeah, pieces right. of his body, yes. Cool. <laughs> yeah, so, so we, can, we can have lots of fun talking about relics through this too. Mm-hmm. Um, so the saints were the people who died for the faith, all right? Okay. Um, and so we have big lists of martyrs, all right? Um, so there's the martyrs. And then there's also um, 
the piece of, you know, people that um, once they died, people believing to be saints, believing that there should be kind of a cult of devotion around them. All right. And at this point, it's not, it's not like a unified thing. The Pope isn't doing it. Okay. First we go from just popular devotion. All right. This is a really holy person in my community. We saw them die for their faith. And, you know, we are, we think that they're in heaven. All right. Right. Being canonized means you're put on a list. All right. The list isn't exhaustive. It is just an official list that the church keeps that these people are, they were holy people, that they lived a good Christian life and that their witness is, um, you know, strong enough to be kind of a point of devotion for the faithful. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, when you say devotion, can you, can you elaborate on that? What does that mean exactly? Yeah. So not worship. They were not worshiped. I need to be very, very, very clear. Um, But the, you can learn from their lives. You can look at their witness and you can be like, wow, like I, like that is the Christian life. Like I could emulate them in some ways. All right. Um, I can, you know, and, and there's like all sorts of different types of saints. There's the, you know, the saints like, okay, wow, they died well. All right. Mm-hmm. In unpersecution, that's that. Or then there's other saints like St. Augustine where, wow, look at his faith journey. Um, you know, I can emulate that. Um, so kind of, uh, sometimes like the cult, uh, it, it's, it's an unfortunate because the word cult has so much baggage now, but right. that was, um, you know, the worthy of like kind of public, a public cult, public mm-hmm. devotion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it, do, it doesn't mean like a weird, creepy cult. It just means no, the no. ways that the saints were honored in, you know, in culture and in mm-hmm. liturgy and, you know, in, in the in the church context, it, it's not like something, it's not like the occult. It's not like a no, creepy thing. No, not yeah. the occult, not Jonestown. It's nothing like that. It's, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> right, that they lived a good yeah. Christian life. Um, and so that was, that was the early church. It was more just like people saying, hey, this person's a saint. Mm-hmm. Right. And then, you know, by the early Middle Ages, you have bishops taking this over. Because you can imagine this is rather freewielding then, right? Oh, you know, sure, people right. are just right. So, okay, yeah. the bishops are like, oh, we need we need some parameters here. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then by the high Middle Ages, there's a real call for actually, I think we need like a centralized list, mm. and mm. we need like a real authority here. And so, um, in the year 1234, the Pope officially gets the right to canonize. And, oh, and so, from that point forward, it's actually the Pope who does it. So at that point in the 1200s, when the Pope, does does the Pope take uh, the old list and like approve that or decide on who's, and then from that point forward, decides who's on the list, who's canonized? Is that right? Exactly. Yep. The yep. old lists are kept. So we have all these folks in the early church where it's like, was this person even real? Like, there's lots of questions, <laughs> sure. or you know, right. you know, like Saint Valentine. This could maybe it's this guy, maybe it's this guy. We don't know. I mean, there's just you know, Saint George, a favorite. You know, the dragons. Sl- I mean, there's all <laughs> Saint right. Christopher. There's always like, was he right. real? Um, right. So yes, that, it takes the same. But then from that point on, it becomes sort of the the hierarchy, the Pope who does it. Mm -hmm. And then of course, there's really good things about that. And there's, you know, obviously, um, there's some political things about that too. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. you, you know, who, what type of people do we want to lift up as kind of heroes of the faith, right? Um, The process gets a lot more complicated, right? And now now it's such a complicated process. What is, what is the process now? If you, yeah. So uh, I wish I had the whole thing laid out. The person has to have died a number, I think it's like five years before you can start the process. And then they're beautified. And then you need proof of miracles. And then you actually need papal approval after that. Um, within the Catholic Church, I, I, sh- I did not say that, mention this. The Catholic right. Church is the only church that has a process right. of of canonization. Um, The Anglican and the Lutheran churches also 
have saints, um, but it's not this process. So right. I was, I was actually, it, it's kind of funny how this ended up. Um, I was reading about this recently. Oscar Romero was oh, canonized in uh, 2018, Catholic priest from El Salvador. Yeah. He actually made it onto the Anglican and Lutheran list before the Catholic list <laughs> <laughs> because the Catholic process was so long. <laughs> That's interesting. But that the, the, um, the Anglican, like sort of the more Protestant lists, those aren't, um, there's not like a, there's not like a saint committee that does that right that's that's just people say hey this was a person that we ought to emulate look to their life you know learn more about kind of a thing but but the process isn't as like you were saying it's not as um precise or you know controlled i guess as in the in the roman catholic church right right and you don't need like proof of miracles and things sure, like sure, that sure. which really right. like elevate it yeah sure 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 yeah, that is makes the, sense. I mean, is there a is there a Lutheran list, or do we just borrow from the Catholics? Like, like no, have, this last Sunday, we talked about Saint Patrick, right? The commemoration of Saint Patrick as a missionary to Ireland. But I, I just always assumed, I guess, that we borrowed that from the Catholics. My understanding, and I'm not like I have a great deal of knowledge about this, but friend of the pod, um, Sarah Hinlicky Wilson. Yeah. She has a she has a lot of interest in like what she calls like evangelical saints or evangelical mm -hmm. hagiography. Hagiography being a fancy word for like telling the story of like the saints and cool people who have done cool mm -hmm. things in the faith. So she yeah. has like lists that she has kept, and I think there's informal. I mean, I don't think that there's like an official body in mm. in say the Lutheran tradition that says we gr we hereby dub thee a saint, but. <laughs> The um, I'm sure that's the exact word that the Pope uses. We hereby in that voice too, <laughs> exactly, exactly <laughs> like that. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, I, I think yeah, there are there are people that publish lists and oh, and okay. I, I mean I think it's a thing that we I mean personally I agree with Sarah on this that it is a thing that we could you know that we could stand to kind of reclaim a bit in the Protestant traditions. Mm. Um, because it is a beautiful thing to look at the lives of people who have lived well in the faith and to take inspiration, you know, mm -hmm. from, from their lives and to tell their stories, because what's more powerful than a story in right. terms of helping us sort of like put into practice the things that we believe and, and are called to. No, um, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I think about, uh, you know, uh, biblically speaking, <laughs> Uh, there are lists in scripture, of course, probably most famously, uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Now, faith is the, sh the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, which is uh, a famous verse. But what follows that is all these, uh, is this list of examples of people who lived by faith. So uh, Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, um, uh, Rahab, uh, Gideon, Barak, Samson, who through faith conquered kingdoms. Uh, women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Uh, they were stoned to death. Uh, uh, people of whom the world was not worthy. You know, in time, uh, 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 the author of Hebrews says, and what more should I say for time would fail me to tell of you know, all these other people. So uh, I think that impulse to find examples of mm -hmm. people of faith, the people who lived exemplary lives or who lived lives devoted to God, uh, trusting in God, uh, they, they can teach us a lot. Uh, and so it goes back, right? Uh, even if we don't talk about them, uh, you know, about a canonization process, certainly, uh, you know, uh, the author of Hebrews goes on to say, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us you know, run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. So this idea of this communion of saints that uh, have gone before us, that have, that have modeled for us what a faithful Christian life looks like, or in this case, you know, the people that are listed in Hebrews, are mm -hmm. uh, from the Old Testament, right? A faithful right. Israelite Jewish life. Um, that's who we should uh, emulate. And of course, Jesus, uh, most of all, who is more than a saint. 
But yeah, being surrounded by that great communion of saints. And sometimes the saints aren't going to be, you know, people list in that whatever official list or unofficial list, right? Some of the saints are going to be my grandma Esther, right? <laughs> or Grandpa mm-hmm. Herbert or Uncle Herbert, or right? We all have those saints in our own personal lives who have gone before us, my father, Jim, right? Who have who have taught us uh, what it means to live a faithful Christian life. Right. So I Absolutely. think that's what, yeah. you know, that's what when we celebrate All Saints Day uh, in the Lutheran Church, we, we talk about that, right? That it is these saints, these great exemplars of faith that everybody knows. And then there's also uh, the saints in our own lives. I have a picture of my grandpa Urban right next to me. Uh, so that's anyway. Really. Right. You know, the kind of the viewing the, the church militant and the church triumphant, you know, as one church. And, and we have our, our people on the side of the, that are in the church triumphant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just to define those terms, Jenny. Oh, yes, because it might sound a little scary, the church militant. militant. Those of us who are, are still alive on earth and those ha- who mm-hmm. have died, the church right. triumphant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those right. who, are, who have gone to, you know. And, and so that's another thing, you know, um, within the Catholic Church, the saints, absolutely all of that. And then, of course, you know, we have our, our list where you have these saints that we sort of elevate and and can kind of view as like friends almost. You know, it's not just it's not even just that they um, are examples. It's, you know, you can petition them to pray for you and things like that. that yes, yeah, it goes say a little more further in the Catholic Church. Yeah, say more about that, Jenny, because that is a uniquely Catholic thing, I think. It is a uniquely Catholic thing, yes. And I always, always get tons of questions on it. So I thought this might be a good place. Sure. You know, the first question is like, why do you pray to the saints? And it's like, well, actually, we don't. You know, right. I, I want to be clear, Catholics don't pray to the saints. Um, but the idea is like, well, you could petition a saint to pray for you because they're already in heaven and they live this pious life. And so it's like just, you know, if I were having a hard time, I might be like, hey, Catherine, could you pray for me? It's sort of like that, except for that my friend might be, you know, the 16th century Carmelite nun, Teresa of Avila, right? <laughs> <laughs> who I love, who I just love. And I would absolutely <laughs> ask her to pray for me. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah they're no, both examples helpful. yeah mm-hmm. that's a helpful way of thinking about it a friend that you yeah. ask yeah, yeah. And, and you know I'm sure there are some people who take it too far but I mean that is the correct doctrine of like no they are kind of friends in Christ and they could pray for you and you know th- there's funny things if you lose something you can you know petition Saint Anthony or if you <laughs> You know, there's a saint for every, there's a saint for everything, every <laughs> oh, yeah. country, every place. If you got a problem, there's a saint for There's you. a saint for that. <laughs> there's a saint and for do that. You, do, you, uh, do you have a favorite saint or a, a favorite uh, activity that a saint is associated with, Jenny? So my, so St. Teresa of Avila is my favorite saint, hands down. Oh. Um so it's kind of funny. I was born on her feast day. I remember reading like a little thing about her and she just seemed kind of boring. And then when I was a church historian, really diving into her life, I was like, she is like the coolest woman ever. Mm. <laughs> and just really, really enjoying. Um, she, she was, she wrote a ton. She, she's funny. If you read her work, she's very, very funny. Uh-huh. Um so she's my favorite. Uh, there's the Saint, Saint Bede the Venerable is the patron saint of historians. Oh, there you go. Um, that's one. So if that's I'm, your guy. I'm having a, yeah, yeah. If I'm having a really hard time with like a history deadline, you know, I could petition him. Uh, <laughs> sure. I, I lose things all the time. So St. Anthony, you know, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's good. So, and of course, it was just St. Patrick's Day, which is always a, it's always a fun is he, one. Is he the same? Is he the patron saint of beer? No, of Ireland. Oh, oh, Ireland. Ireland. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. People it. just drink a lot of beer on oh, this day. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> That's hilarious. No, it's good. Yeah. So, so just to be clear, you're not praying to the saints, but but you uh, you pray, Catholics still pray directly to God. Absolutely. Right. Not yes, pray just yes. through the saints. Yeah. No, right. no, no. Absolutely. Yeah. Pray, pray to God. Yes. The saints are just also there as models of devotion and, and things. And and I think one of the, the things that's really nice about the saints, especially for women, 
you have a lot of women who are kind of elevated, who are lifted up, who are very visible in the tradition and have that and always have been um, in that tradition, which is nice. Yeah, because yeah, there, there can be there can be less of those, right? There's fewer women in the Bible. And so to have sort of this way of remembering and honoring the many, many, many faithful women of the of the faith, that's that's a, that is a very beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Or even church history, often yeah. really neglected totally. women, but then you'd have these, you know, women saints that you could look at. So, mm. yeah. That's cool. That's yeah. great. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Jenny, for joining us um, today on the uh, Enter the Bible podcast. Uh, a little more Enter the Church History, you know, podcast maybe episode today, but that's uh, that Which is, is that is Which also is very important and good <laughs> yeah. stuff. Uh, and of course, as we talked about, certainly has its um, parallels and roots in Scripture as well. So, I just appreciate you being here and 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 uh, sharing a bit about um, the saints and sort of the development of that tradition. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, really good to have you, Jenny. Thanks. This is fun. Um, and thank you to our listeners uh, and viewers on on YouTube. Um, we're so glad you're with us. Uh, you can go to enterthebible.org for more podcasts, videos, courses, commentaries, all kinds of stuff, anything you would need to know uh, to dive in uh, deep, more deeply into uh, the Bible and into the Christian faith. And um, we will see you next time.